Throughout history, the pursuit of understanding our ancestry has captivated human curiosity. This fascinating journey is known as genealogy. For centuries, traditional genealogy has focused on documented records and oral history. What once was the only way to trace family histories and connect with family members has now been combined with modern day DNA testing to help people explore their ancestry, find long lost relatives, and more recently, help solve criminal investigations. This is the powerful field of genetic genealogy. Join us in this webinar as we explore the world of genetic genealogy, understanding its principles, the methods used to infer genetic relationships, and most intriguingly, how genealogy is used in forensics to help solve crimes. Genealogy intersects with our everyday health. During routine visits to the doctor's office, you may have been asked about your family's history of certain diseases. These diseases that are commonly asked about, such as diabetes, cancer, and hypertension, are all strongly influenced by your genetics. Doctors use your family history to create pedigrees, visual representations that trace the inheritance of traits or genetic conditions across generations of a family tree. Doctors use pedigrees to help decide if there is a heightened risk for a genetic disease running in the family, such as cancer. By understanding genetic risk, doctors can advise high-risk patients to take preventative measures, such as routine screening. Let's walk through a hypothetical situation to understand how family history is used to impact patient care. Meet Jeff, a 35-year-old man attending a routine checkup. When asked about his family history of cancers, Jeff mentions that both his father and grandfather had colon cancer. Jeff's doctor, recognizing the potential risk, suggests genetic testing, which reveals that Jeff has an increased susceptibility to developing colon cancer. In response, Jeff's doctor advises him to begin routine colonoscopies earlier than the standard age for colon cancer screening. While genetic genealogy does not assess health risk as shown in this example, it uses the very same pedigrees to trace family lineage. The second component of genetic genealogy is DNA testing. There are three sources of DNA that can be used to trace ancestral lines and determine the biological relationships between individuals. Autosomal DNA, mitochondrial DNA, and Y-chromosomal DNA. Autosomal DNA is found within our 22 pairs of chromosomes, not including the sex chromosomes, which are XX in females and XY in males. We inherit one autosomal chromosome from our mother and one from our father. During every fertilization event, long stretches of DNA from both parents are randomly broken up into smaller segments and shuffled around through a process known as recombination. This introduces diversity. So although each child shares approximately 50% of their DNA with each parent, different children inherit different combinations of DNA from their parents. Here's the key part. The more closely related two people are, the more unshuffled DNA segments they share. These segments are said to be identical by descent, or IBD for short. This means that over each generation of a family tree, the stretches of unshuffled DNA shared between two closely related individuals becomes shorter and shorter. Let's pause and do a concept check to assess your understanding. What is an identical by descent or IBD DNA segment? Answer choice A, DNA segments with intervening recombination. Answer choice B, DNA segments that are identical between two related individuals. Or finally, answer choice C, DNA segments that increase genetic diversity. The correct answer is B, IBD segments are DNA segments that are identical between two related individuals. To trace ancestral lines, genealogists use autosomal DNA testing to find IBD segments in related individuals. 
This is done by checking the amount of DNA markers, called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, shared between the two individuals. The more SNPs two people share over a given length of DNA, the more likely it is that that region is an IBD segment. The length of IBD segments are crucial. They tell us how many generations back in time a common ancestor occurred. Even though autosomal DNA testing only looks at 1% of your entire DNA, the information encoded in there can identify a person's ancestors for up to five to seven generations of a family tree, going back 200 years in time. But the journey doesn't end here. Once genealogy experts have identified common ancestors, why chromosomal and mitochondrial DNA testing can be used to determine if two people are related through the maternal or the paternal side. These maternal and paternal lineages go back centuries, and a group of people who share a common ancestor through one of these lineages are said to belong to the same haplogroup. Mitochondrial DNA is unique because it is only passed down from a mother to her children with no recombination and few genetic changes. This means that each person shares their mitochondrial DNA with their mothers, sisters, brothers, maternal grandmothers, aunts, uncles, and so on. On the other hand, Y chromosomes are passed down from father to son usually with no genetic changes. This means that each male shares their Y chromosomal DNA with their fathers, brothers, uncles, grandfathers, and so on. Since females typically don't have a Y chromosome, their paternal lineage has to be determined by directly testing their male relatives. Let's pause and do an additional concept check to assess your understanding. Which of the following is true about genetic testing? Answer choice A, mitochondrial DNA testing traces maternal lineage. Answer choice B, Y chromosomal DNA testing can be conducted on females. Answer choice C, autosomal DNA testing includes Y chromosomal genetic testing. The correct answer is A, mitochondrial DNA testing traces maternal lineage. Thanks to natural human curiosity and the growing popularity of direct-to-consumer genetic testing companies like 23andMe and Ancestry DNA, anyone can submit a saliva or cheek swab sample for genetic testing to uncover information about their ancestry, genetic heritage, and connections to unknown family members. But genetic genealogy isn't just about personal discovery. Investigational crimes that were once seemingly unsolvable have now been cracked wide open thanks to the help of investigative genetic genealogy. To narrow down an investigative search, investigators can upload DNA collected from a crime scene and compare it to direct-to-consumer DNA profiles to identify suspects, victims, or close relatives of a person of interest. Once investigators have found a match, they can begin constructing a family tree using documentary evidence, such as civil registration records of births, marriages, and deaths in the family, in addition to investigational evidence, such as details about the crime. Once a person of interest has been identified, traditional forensic DNA profiling can be used to confirm their identity and verify if it is a match to the DNA sample from the crime scene. There may be hundreds of individuals investigated through this approach before the person of interest is found. The first major success in investigative genetic genealogy that took the public by storm was the arrest of the infamous Golden State Killer in 2018, almost five decades after the original crimes were committed. With the help of genealogy experts, police investigators uploaded the Golden State Killer's genetic information from the crime scene to GEDmatch, a public genealogy database that makes it possible for users from different direct-to-consumer genetic testing companies to upload their genetic data. Using GEDmatch, the killer's DNA was matched to a potential fourth cousin. 
After four long months of constructing a family tree, investigators were able to narrow down the potential suspect based on age and geographical location. They initially tested the DNA of a 73-year-old man at the Oregon nursing home before ruling him out as the killer. The man's daughter then worked with the police to help further narrow down their investigation. Eventually, they honed in on one man by the name of Joseph James D'Angelo. After retrieving his DNA from a discarded tissue and the handle of a car door without his knowledge, DNA profiling revealed that his DNA matched what was found at the crime scene. D'Angelo was subsequently arrested and charged for his crimes. Let's pause and do a final concept check to assess your understanding. Which of the following is not used in investigative genetic genealogy? Answer choice A, genealogy databases. Answer choice B, civil registration records. Or finally, answer choice C, DNA editing. The correct answer is C, DNA editing is not used in investigative genetic genealogy. As of 2023, it has been estimated that over 500 crimes and cold cases have been solved with the help of genetic genealogy. However, the Golden State Killer case brings up a key concern, the safeguarding of genetic privacy. While raw genetic information remains private and protected, public genealogy databases, like GenMatch, allows users to opt in to granting law enforcement access to their data for investigative purposes. This bypasses the need for a search warrant, which is typically required for accessing data from direct-to-consumer companies. This poses a dual responsibility. Genetic testing companies and public genealogy databases must ensure that the use and release of genetic data is ethical and responsible. At the same time, those who undergo this testing have a personal responsibility to be well informed about the implications of their consent and the potential uses of their genetic data. This highlights the delicate balance between using people's genetic information and protecting their rights to privacy. Let's recap what we've learned today. Genetic genealogy estimates how closely related two individuals are by measuring the length of the identical DNA segments they share. Genetic genealogy has held a long tradition in medicine. With advancements in genetic testing, the practice is transforming not just investigations, but justice itself. It is now possible for law enforcement to crack cold cases by constructing family trees using publicly available data. However, not all genetic relationships can be inferred with high accuracy. This is a reminder that genetic genealogy, while powerful, is not a perfect science. With rapid advancements in the field, the capabilities of genetic genealogy will continue to grow, making it imperative that this technology is used ethically and responsibly. Thank you.